An emotion is a thought that doesn't have an impact only on the mind. It has an impact on the body. And it has that impact through the breath. Not only the in and out breath, but also the breath energy is moving throughout the different parts of the body, along the blood vessels, along the nerves. It's strange that some people don't even think there is a breath moving along the nerves and the blood vessels. When I was in France, I was telling people to imagine the breath energy moving in different parts of the body. And several people complained. They said they didn't like this kind of make-believe meditation. And as I explained, it's not the case that you're imagining something that's not there. You're teaching yourself to imagine something that is there, but that your conceptual framework doesn't have room for. It's like that problem they had with the satellites over the poles. For many years, the satellites were getting data that showed that there was a big hole in the ozone layer. But the computer program that was designed to read the results of the read the data had not been built to imagine that such a thing was possible. So the data were thrown out. There are many things that you do do not see, do not detect, because your mind doesn't have the concept. Even though the breath energies are things that we're using all the time. And because we're ignorant of them, we tend to create suffering out of them. You see something you fear, or something that's like something you've experienced as a danger in the past, and it immediately goes into the breath. There's a perception, and then the perception triggers something in the way you breathe. And then you start suffering the physical symptoms of fear. The same with anger, lust. all these emotions. So when we come to focus on the breath, some people find it difficult territory to negotiate, because they've been using the breath energies to amplify emotions. You can get your heart to start beating a certain way. There's a tightness. This is basically how the parts of the mind that want to go with that emotion force you to go with them. It's like they hold the body hostage. They've actually held the breath hostage. They put the squeeze on your nerves. Say, so if you don't give in, we're just going to squeeze harder and harder. And then if you've given in, then they go away, and the breath gets back to normal. Ideally, you want to learn how to short-circuit that process by getting your wisdom, getting your discernment to go directly to the breath, so you can breathe calmly even when the signals of the brain are telling you that there's something to be feared or something to be desired. But the times when this territory of the breath and the body just carries a lot of emotional weight and the your mind's instinctive reactions of how to direct the breath energy are so ingrained that it's hard to focus on the breath without just simply going along with those old patterns. So in cases like that, it's good to stop focusing on the breath and start focusing on a topic you can think about that calms the mind down. Goodwill is a good reflection. Reflection on karma is often useful as well. There are certain issues in life where we feel that we've been unjustly treated. And it's good to remember that karma has been going on for a long, long time. And the back and forth that we've had with one another has been so, so long and so complex that there's really nobody to keep tallying. Putting the individual events of your life into that much larger framework sometimes helps take a lot of the sting out. You can step back from them.
and view them with a little bit of distance. Because that's the important part of getting, getting past these things, instead of being in them. In other words, taking them on as what you are right now. You see them as a process, and part of a much larger process. And then as you've taken a lot of the, the sting out of the stories and the perceptions, then you can go back to the breath. There was a Zen monk, Hakuin, who talked about the Zen sickness. He'd be getting headaches every time he meditated. They finally came up with a technique, just to imagine a big ball of butter on the top of his head, and it was melting. And so all the sensations from his head on down were just melting down, 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 both as he breathed in and as he breathed out. And that's one of the sicknesses that comes. When we breathe in, sometimes we instinctively think of the breath energy going up. It gets pulled up, pulled up, pulled up, and then it gets so there's a lot of tension in the head. Well, think of things going down, down, down. Focus on the palms of your hands, the soles of your feet. And as you breathe in, think of the breath energy going out. As you breathe out, think of the breath energy going out. This is because the breath energy is very sensitive to perceptions. So create some new perceptions for yourself. Those images that you have in mind. In other words, you don't have to use physical force to press the breath down. You just learn which perceptions the breath will respond to. And learn how to be good at holding those perceptions in mind. It's only when they have a time to, the time to be there for a while can they start seeping into whichever parts of the brain are controlling the way you breathe. You can rewire them. And as you engage with the, your sense of the body like this, it's also good to remember that what you feel as you sense the body is primarily breath energy. So if there's a sense of blockage, don't think of yourself having to force the breath through the blockage. Just back up a little bit and remind yourself the breath is actually there first. So simply imagine the breath going through. Return it to its prior place in your sense of the body. So that the pains in the body aren't directing the breath, or well, the tightness in the muscles is not directing the breath. Your perceptions of where the breath can flow are directing the breath. So try to give priority to those. And use some imagination. Try to observe when you breathe in how the breath is moving. Get sensitive to the movements of these energies. And then if it's something that feels unhealthy or feels uncomfortable, just turn the energies around. This is one of the reasons why John Lee has you breathe in at the back of the neck, because when you breathe in you tend to be thinking of pulling the air in through the nose, so you're pulling back and up sometimes. If you think of the breath energy as entering at the back of the neck and then going down the spine, you're going in the, the opposite direction. That can relieve a lot of the tension that comes with the way you've been imagining the breath, subconsciously. This is why the descriptions of breath energy are so important, because they give you something new to imagine, a new set of perceptions to bring to what's going on right here. Perceptions that allow you to change the way the energy flows. If you can't even imagine the energy, how can you change it? 
you, how you, you can't consciously change it. Uh, subconsciously, it's going on all the time. This is why certain parts of the body are, are related to certain memories. There's a subconscious connection between the breath at that time and the impact it had on that part of the body. And sometimes the impact was so strong that that part of the body feels wounded. I remember reading of an African shaman who came to the States. And he said he noticed a lot of people seem to be missing, have a big hole right where their throats should be. That he associated with unexpressed grief. And there are other parts of the body that also have certain patterns of energy that come with grief, fear, you name it. And if you can imagine these energy wounds, okay, then you can work with them. If you can't imagine them, you can't work with them. The image I gave when I was in France was of learning how to imagine that the world is round. When you tell this to a child, the child has no evidence to begin with, even though he's standing right on top of the round earth. But you tell them, use your imagination. And then as you grow up, you begin to realize that if you're going to fly to Bangkok from Los Angeles, you go over Alaska. You fly to Paris, you're going to go over Greenland, because the world is round. If the world were flat, those plane routes wouldn't make any sense. You couldn't make use of them. In the same way, we can imagine the breath energies and realize the close relationship between perception and the flow of the energies in the body. You can use those perceptions to help straighten things out inside and to take a lot of the fangs and claws off of the emotions that lie buried in the wounded parts of your energy body. So learn how to use the power of perception and its close relationship to the, the flow of the breath in the body. Calm the mind down if the perceptions are, are too loaded emotionally until you can deal directly with the breath energies from a new perspective. And then you can make use of them. As the Buddha says, when there's a sense of ease that comes with the breath, you let it spread throughout the whole body. When you can think of the breath energies going through the body, it's a lot easier to let that spread. So learn how to reimagine the body so it can become a vehicle for right concentration, and from right concentration on to right discernment. The potentials are all here. You simply have to expand your imagination so you can make the best use of them. 